Welcome to the Ignition Point Podcast, the channel for aspiring entrepreneurs. I'm Debbie Hart. We've got Sean Finnegan here. And today we've got the cool Dan Young, owner of PC Laptops, Zydex, the ugly unicorn hedge fund. And what's the name of your podcast? It's named after you, right? Dan's Millionaire Code Podcast. There we there go. go. With so many things you've got going on and so much success, where did it all begin? Oh, wow. Venice Beach, California. So I grew up in Southern California. My first entrepreneurial endeavor was selling t-shirts and sunglasses at the beach. Mm. Ooh, okay. How old were you when you started that? 14. 14 years old. Were you selling right on the boardwalk area where right all the entertainers the are and everything? Right on there, roller skate dude with a guitar wow. and all that. Yeah. yeah. So did you just come up with that on your own or did someone inspire you to start building your own life? So my friend's mom was this crazy Korean lady that sold knockoff purses and shirts <laughs> at the swap meet. Like, you know, and mm. and we go there and hang out. And here's my friend and all that. And that. And she's like, you guys should go sell. And we're like, okay. And I'm like, hmm, how about those sunglasses? She's like, I'll sell it to you for a good deal. So, she's <laughs> <Right. laughs> so we took the sunglasses to the beach. And um, the secret was this, though. We were teenagers. We liked to hang out with girls and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So we would set up beach chairs and a little card table. And we get girls from high school. And they would put on roller skates and wear bikinis. And they would go up to people <laughs> with a mirror and be like, hey, you need sunglasses, dude? You need sunglasses, dude? $10 or two sets for 15 And we would pay them a commission. And so nice. we would pay Amazing. money, right? And then we'd have a whole cooler full of wine coolers and things like that uh -huh. at the beach. You know, I, I was a minder, you know. And so we were at the beach, right? You know, yeah. and so everyone wanted to hang out at the beach anyway. Free mm. food, free drinks, social, hang out with all your friends. Jeez, you created guys, that experience. Yeah, you yeah. did. And yeah. I mean, some days we'd make a thousand a day. Jeez. Wow, that's so. really good money for a 14 year old. Oh yeah, back in the 80s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. That's making bank for a 14 year old in the 80s. So when did you come up with the idea for PC laptop? Yeah, what was the ignition point on that yeah. one? Like, okay, so this is pretty you early go on. From selling sunglasses yeah. to computers. Yeah. Fa fast forward to Utah, you know, I moved to Utah because I became a delinquent teenager, too much drinking those wine coolers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, my sister adopted me here. I uh, got a job at Radio Shack in the mall, hmm. right? Selling uh, computers and electronics electronic and all parts. that yeah. radio shack went out of business so i decided to start my own computer company and that's how pc this laptop is, this started is what year 92 Jeez. how did you start you just started out of your house out of my house so i had a list of the customers that i sold people computers to and um i just cold called them and i said hey the company i worked for is not there and if you have a computer i'll honor your warranty the first year i lost twenty five thousand dollars in the red Jeez. wow um, but the next year we did over a million in revenue wow wow so it was like pretty cool what was the market like back in 1992 computers i mean was it i mean obviously they'd been around but they started becoming more mainstream about that time computers back then were kind of like crypto like bitcoin right now like people were like i don't know about the internet it's kind of sketchy and kind of scammy i don't know if there's a future no one's going to use the internet only thieves use the internet eh. <laughs> you know and uh, you know so the internet people were sketchy on mm -hmm. and then as the 90s progressed and into the 2000s the internet became it right so what mental or emotional fortitude did you have to develop to get past those comments and those beliefs around you and and twenty five thousand dollar loss your first year yeah, not sure. a lot of people would keep going after that yeah 25 grand your first year is like okay uh, i gotta mail this in yeah. yeah a lot of my friends work for a place called rc willie a furniture place oh, yeah, locally sure. and they have electronics and they're like just come work here dude you're gonna regret you went on your own you're gonna lose your butt <laughs> right and, uh, that's what we hear but when we did the million in rev i made more money i netted like 142 thousand dollars which was a lot because the most i ever made at the radio shack and silo and those electronic places i sold before is maybe like 50 grand or and something. selling gla glasses on the beach that was really good. Money. <laughs> yeah. good I bought money. my Camaro with that money. Oh, wow. wow. My so you, you have sales skills and you knew that, but someone hits that $25,000 loss. How do you know when to walk away and when to keep going? It's an interesting one. I was talking to a lot of friends in our tech and tech industries hit really hard now with recessionary you know, yeah. tonality. So a lot of tech companies are laying people off. A lot of startup tech guys I know are just closing shop. It's scary you know, for a lot of people, but really you just got to batten down the hatches, look at your operating costs, look at what's necessary Necessary. Sometimes your people that work for you and yourself will have to wear four or five hats. Eat ramen noodles, you know? Hmm. Eat ramen noodles. Um, You're but not the first person to say that today. <laughs> Steve Jobs, though, was literally, he had to borrow money from Bill Gates because he yeah. was one payroll away from bankruptcy, right? Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and that also happened to Elon Musk. He mm -hmm. was like a payroll away from Tesla going bankrupt. That's just 
being an entrepreneur. You can't get and to some, success Somehow you had failure. persistence to just power through it. Yeah, as long as like, you know, you have a good plan, good mentors, good employees working for you and your mind is sound. And as long as your, your plan makes sense mathematically, you probably will be okay without giving up. So let's talk about Zydex now because I've been through the factory tour. Tons of people there working. I mean, it's like pictures of art in these PCs. Cooled units, all these neon lights. Talk to us about those kind of designs and what you're doing now. So, you know, like super mega content creators like to use computers. We just did that collab with Steve Ioki Mm -hmm. and then we're telling the video guys here yeah, Mr. Beast bought some and gave them away to some awesome lucky winner you know really you got to create something that's beautiful that people want but also mathematically fast computers like what we build can save companies money a lot of companies have content creators and people doing compiling code and so if it takes to process a video seven hours like you can bench test an average computer against ours in a seven hour project you can compile in less than 30 minutes for mm -hmm. a render or for code compiling so if you can save that kind of time that's mm -hmm. money to an agent or a company like Google or Amazon. Yeah. Those are our customers, you know, and, and, and end users just mm. running a business, you know? Yeah. So it makes sense financially to really upgrade the speed for efficiency. Yeah, and for employee retention. You know, it's hard to hire good people and retain them. And so a lot of companies buy computers from us. We laser etch their name on it, customize it how they want. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's their rig. We call it a yeah. rig, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, this company cares about me to get me on my own custom rig. I care about this company. Yeah, I've been up to Space Station and you supply all their computers and walking through. It's like one of the highlights of the tour, seeing these cool computers. And well, people, definitely. like you said, it's like the employees like coming in and seeing that cool space. The Sean's over there, a lot of Sean's in Utah. The Sean's over there really love their employees and they want them to have good stuff, you know? Yeah. Tell us about the Unicorn Fund. The Ugly Unicorn Fund. So Crypto Hedge Fund, we launched right before the crypto winter crash. Our pitch was risk mitigation, meaning a lot of people invest in crypto and they lose a lot of money, right? Because it drops and they panic and all that. So when the uh, market crashed like crazy, um, we were still doing really good. We way outpaced the market. And, uh, and that was a good test of like, does our thesis work of mm -hmm. risk mitigation? So we did well. So now we have family offices, and a lot of wealthy people investing in our fund and we just manage their crypto portfolio, help make them money. I met uh, Dan at a coins and car event. So if you get an invitation for a coins and car event, it's an incredible event and he got up and spoke and there was hundreds of people there uh, it's such a such a great time but just the information so you got to follow dan i love it how you keep really current like you're pulling up what's happening right now and your commentary is about the market what's your approach on that it's just data gathering and assembling that data and connecting the dots together. We're going to go through some interesting times. You know, the rates, now the feds, are they've already priced in a couple more rate hikes. But if they pivot after that, then I think people will feel more optimistic and people spending more money at that point. Inflation coming down too. So if you see inflation going low, rates going low, that would be a good recipe for leaving this recessionary tone. I mean, what advice would you give to people who want to balance multiple businesses at the same time? You know, it's all system processes and good people. I like to be like an entrepreneur. I know, Sean, you know, you have what, Kevin mm -hmm. O'Leary, who's yep. invested in what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. And it's the Shark Tank, right? So mm -hmm. we have a mini Shark Tank in a sense within our organizations. I hire people that could be my competitor and I would work for. I just I get them to that. their dreams faster by putting the money up. So I'm like, dude, you can do it, but if it takes you five Five, 10 years, mm -hmm. what if we could do that in a year or two and you're risking my money and you get great health benefits and you have the upside of an entrepreneur and you have equity. Because some people might feel like that's competitive. Like, okay, he's going to be like my competitor. You look at that and you embrace it. Now, you want to hire advice. your competitors, that yeah. are, especially if they're better than you. Yeah, yeah. There are competitors better than me. Right. That's okay. I'd love for them to work with me one day, you know, mm. if I can afford what they need to make. That's a great mindset. Yeah. <laughs> Such great advice. So parting words, what's the best way to engage with the uh, fund or whatever the best way to engage with Dan? You just go to Dan's Millionaire Code on Instagram. That's the best place and there's links to everything. Follow that. Okay. It is incredible content. Watch all of his stories. I don't know if you notice this, but I like like every single one of them and comment. I, I am most all of your videos. It's weird because most of the people who comment and like and sometimes I gotta I gotta simplify what I'm saying, but most of our following are entrepreneurs who already make millions, if not billions, of dollars. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are commenting and liking. Yeah. yeah. And I'm trying to, but because right. maybe because I don't charge anything, I don't yeah. charge people like right. maybe I should. But no, I'm just gonna keep doing it for free. And but the cool thing is like if you if you have billionaires and millionaires who own big businesses commenting and engaging, and this is good stuff yeah. that are going to it as a it reference really point. Man, like I just, I just wanna I wanna help people. I did a video today about the key to immortality that's non-spiritual is passing knowledge to other humans 
for free because they will teach someone else and pay it forward. And a thousand years from now, 10,000 years from now, if the human race is still here, you live on in those kids' minds, yeah. those people's minds. Change the world that way. It's a way to immortality. So freaking good, man. That's amazing. It's awesome. Thanks so much, Dan. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. Appreciate it. If any of you watching today have any doubts that your current CPA is not helping you take 100% advantage of the deductions you deserve and helping you stay compliant with the IRS, then don't hesitate to get involved with TaxHive today. You won't be disappointed.